Hey everyone, welcome to That Pedal Show. Dan here. Mick here, hello and welcome. Um, so what you just heard there was Marshall JTM 45, the modern reissue, and a Marshall 1987X, the modern reissue. We're going to get completely into it today, but before that, some housekeeping. Indeed, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Also, a massive thank you to anyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed some merchandise, some t-shirts and hats and pedals and strings and all the uh, aforementioned. All that stuff. Uh, thanks to people who go to patreon.com slash thatpedalshow and also thanks anyone who goes to thatpedalshop.com in the US and Canada. Beautiful. Uh, without further ado then, we have, regular viewers of the show will know that we have for a long time uh, been in possession of a Marshall 1987X. It's the 50 watt lead, it's the modern reissue thereof, of the amp that was from around 67 to 69 or thereabouts. 70. Oh wow, that old. The famous small box plexi head. Right, okay. We have just acquired in the last week a JTM45, which is its predecessor in many respects. Um, Let's have some history. Okay, I'll try and keep this brief. Needless to say, there's a ton of great martial history information out there on the web. Some great books been written down the years. Uh, what I'm about to tell you is an amalgamation of some of that. Um, and having had the great privilege of speaking to some great people down the years, some of which was committed to memory. Marshall JTM 45, model number 2245, and model number 1987, lead 50. Rewind then to 1962, where Jim Marshall creates the first prototype of the JTM 45 uh, in conjunction with Ken Brand and Dudley Craven. It's also reported that certain Richie Blackmore and uh, Jimmy Page were early testers. JTM means Jim and Terry Marshall. 45 means it was originally 45 watts. It's well documented that it was basically a copy of a 5F6A tweed Fender Baseman, the 1959 Baseman, uh, which of course Fender wasn't making by 62 because it had moved on to the brown panel cream and brown Tolex amps. Everything was basically the same, but there were some key differences. The first being a transformer type and the chassis type. Also that that transformer in the basement was uh, configured for two ohms for the speakers and in the JTM it was 16 ohms. And of course, then there's cabinet and speakers. So in the basement, tweed basement, we have a pine cab with 10 inch Jensen speakers. Uh, Marshall would move to a closed back 12 inch speaker cabinet using Celestians, massive difference. The JTM45 originally had 5881 output valves, but later moved to KT66s, although the reissues have 5881s. That's a whole rabbit hole because they're not what they were. You can read online about that if you want to know more. However, they are spec as 5881s, which is essentially a higher power, kind of more military spec version of a 6L6. In addition to that, the Marshall used two 12AX7s, or at least came to use two 12AX7s uh, as the preamp stages, uh, whereas the Fender Basement had a 1287 as a V1. And in addition to that, it is said that, and I say it said that, I read, <laughs> the Marshall has less negative feedback through the circuit, which ends up as a different harmonic response. In his book, Tube Amp Talk for the Guitarist and Tech, Gerald Weber says there was also a phase relationship difference between the two amps. So um, the plus and minus uh, phase relationship that you would get from an amp and the plus and minus relationship from the speaker was opposing in the basement and the Marshall. And according to him anyway, that was a big reason why they sounded different. But that's probably enough about Fender Basements because this is a Marshall video. I just wanted it to mention it because, you know, that 1959 5F6A basement is probably the most important guitar amp of all time. A, because it was an amazing guitar amp, but B, because it spawned the whole of Marshall. Back to the JTM45 then, in 1965, the script logo appears uh, and becomes that iconic definition of what guitar amplifier head means to most people. It was also, the uh, electronics bit was the part of the two by 12 combo dubbed the Blues Breaker, so called, because Eric Clapton used it on John Mayall's Blues Breakers album in 66. And if you haven't heard that, please do. 
That said, Marshall stopped making the JTM 45 in 1966, or at least evolved it into the next thing, uh, and it was to be reissued later, which is the amp we have here today. Now, uh, I think most vintage Marshall fans will tell you that the reissues don't sound a great deal like the originals. That is what it is. This is the modern production version of the JTM 45. Now, perhaps the other most famous small box Marshall, small box because it was a smaller box than the 100 watt ones, uh, is the 1987 Plexi. Plexi because of the plexiglass control panel on which the knobs sit. It is basically what the JTM45 eventually evolved into the biggest changes, or at least two of the biggest changes, being change of power valves from KT66s or 5881s, whatever you want to say, uh, into EL34s in the 1987, and also the loss of the valve rectifier. Let's talk about rectifiers for a second because it is relevant to this discussion, particularly in one of the major differences between the two amps. The rectifier is what takes the AC electricity from the wall and converts it into DC, which is what the amp needs to work. In addition to that, you have filter caps to smooth it out, smooth out the pulses so it gets the voltage it needs. Now, again, according to Gerald Weber, a desktop reference of hip vintage guitar amps, a really great series of books. Anyway, Gerald says, the rectifier is basically in series with the power tubes, and what happens is, as the current across the rectifier increases, the voltage delivered to the power tubes decreases. So what happens, you dig in with your guitar, there is a sag, or it feels like sag, because momentarily the power tubes are sagging in the voltage they have available, you get more harmonic distortion, you get less headroom, and all of those things that we've come to associate with a vintage valve amp that's really cranked and has become so well loved. However, rewind to the late 50s and early 60s, distortion in the amp is literally the last thing you wanted. As a result, Marshall figured this out, Fender figured this out, they all figured this out, and uh, at least in the amps of the day, the valve rectifiers were typically replaced with solid state rectifiers so they could use higher power tubes, get more volume, more headroom, and deliver uh, that voltage through the amplifier more quickly and more efficiently. As a quick tangent back to the Tweed Baseman for a second, uh, some of the earlier models had two valve rectifiers and there was one variant which had a particular kind of rectifier that didn't sag. I think it's called an 83. That's for another day. Anyway, it's important because it is a key difference between the JTM45 and the 1987. So Marshall moves away from valve rectifiers, solid state, moves to EL34s and a bunch of other changes. The lead 50 comes into existence. Incidentally, 1987 is not a year. <laughs> I've never really understood it, but, um, and if you Google it, you'll come up with loads of different uh, answers. Presumably somebody at Marshall actually knows. Um, 1987 can refer to a bunch of 50 watt lead amps across the period. 1986 would refer to a 50 watt base. Uh, 1959 is a 100 watt super lead and 1992 is a 100 watt super base. Those are just the model codes. These are all non-master volume amps, of course. Uh, that didn't come along till the 70s. And then uh, Marshall ditched the plexiglass control panel in 1969 for brushed aluminium. The important tonal short story is that the Lead 50, the 1987, is rockier, more aggressive, quicker, more overdrive, some would say harsher, than the JTM45. I hope that's what we're going to hear when we plug them in. Ours does have the Plexi panel and the Mark II designation, uh, which appeared sometime around 67, according to internet searches. Uh, it was the Mark II of the amps at the time, although in this case doesn't really mean anything. And again, it's the modern standard production PCB reissue amp. Absolutely certain that Marshall fans will tell you it doesn't sound much like an original late 60s 50 watt small box lead. Maybe that's for another day. These are the two modern production versions and that's what we're gonna be hearing back to back in this video. As I said, there are many great Marshall resources online. So if you doubt anything I've told you or you feel that some of the facts aren't right, by all means, put it in the comments below and uh, go do some more research online. But that's where we are today. Let's plug them in and uh, do the important bit. That was fascinating. I had no idea that uh, Jim Marshall wasn't responsible for any of that stuff at all. It actually came down to sort of uh, 
So the, the Bigsby dude, you know. <laughs> Dan hasn't watched it yet. Um, what are our questions then, Dan? What, what do we want to know about these two amps? Well, they're both classic, recognisable models of the Marshall, but what is tonally, what's the difference? Yeah, I think because a lot of people, when you come to buy a 50 watt Marshall, now I appreciate there's many, many more Marshall, many, 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 more many, many more Marshalls that Marshalls. have existed past these two amps, but these are these are the, the two originals, if you like. Mm. I don't know if you've had a look at the control panels. Yeah, they're like identical. They're exactly the same. Yeah. Um, and they're both ostensibly 50 watts, even though they're not. They're both small box, etc. Let's plug them in and have a listen. Okay. What you heard in the beginning was uh, the amps set using both channels, and I just went from sort of edge of breakup all the way into heavy overdrive, roughly from about there on the volume controls round to about there, which is one thing. Let's start from the beginning, a four input Marshall. Yes. Why has it got four inputs? You've got two separate channels on the Marshall. You've got a, what they call a high treble channel and a normal channel. Yeah, but two vastly different sounding channels. We'll just have a quick listen to that a sec in the, let's start with the JTM 45. Okay. So this is gonna be the normal channel on the JTM 45. And to do that, If you don't know how to jumper a four input Marshall, you simply connect one channel's low input to the high channel of the other. You'll see that. This is, mm -hmm. the inputs on the left, number one, are the high treble channel. The inputs on the right are the, are the normal channel. So okay. this, is, this is the normal channel. I like that a lot yeah. already. And if I turn up the high treble channel, you'll hear that nothing really happens. Nothing's happening because we're not plugged into it. Compare that with the normal channel on the 1987X. Just switch between them. The 987X is so much louder. Yeah. I'm just going to do a quick detail so you can see where they were. Hang on, so the, the 87X is just turned on. Down here? Yeah. Yeah, we're at less than two on the volume control. Wow. Now let's hear the high treble channel in both amps. Okay. JCM45 first. I shouldn't be doing this with a telly, but I guess it, it highlights the... Um, yeah, yeah, ah! the issue. <laughs> That's legitimately hilarious. It's horrible. Well, to my mind, it's horrible. Yeah. So while you might be very happy using the normal channel, what we tend to do is jump the two channels so you can use them both by inserting a, a patch cable thusly What we now have, as you'll hear, is control over both channels. So if you go back to the JTM, Dan. Mm -hmm.
the, the, the other one? Sorry, I can't leave it there. <laughs> Hopefully that explains what the four inputs on a Marshall kind of do. One is higher gain than the other, by the way, which is why there's two sets of them. And by jumping the channels in that way, you can mix the two channels. That's personally how we like to use it mm. because you can get a nice balance of both. Um, and when you start to overdrive, obviously the whole amp is doing it. So. Yeah, it, it tends to be that thing where, certainly I find for myself, you set the level with the normal channel and the brightness with the high treble channel because most of the time you only need a hair of that channel to give it a bit of an, of an edge. However, that is the channel that overdrives. Yeah. Or you, you get the definition of the overdrive through the high treble channel. Yeah, and it's certainly on our 1987X, the high treble channel is aggressive as anything. Brutal, absolutely brutal. Um, so you can only just have a little bit of it dialed in if you want to retain any sort of clean headroom whatsoever. Right. On the JCM45, you can wang it much higher. Sure. Let's start the comparison then. Indeed. I mean, you've heard quite a bit already, but hopefully what we'll do is just run through some classic guitars, introduce some pedals where relevant, and uh, get an idea on, on where we think they they both sit. So you're just from that, your initial impressions. It, exactly what you've you've read in every book and what I've known from playing them down the years. The 87X, much brusher, much gainier, okay. much more brutal, right. aggressive. The JCM45, smoother, softer, easier to live with. Okay. In the world that I and you live in, mm. which is kind of cleaner, rounder, fuller. Right. However, there is there are situations where the 987X is going to be what you want. Well, really upfront. Let's and find out and brash. Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, you've heard the telly then. Um, let's try and get a nice, clean, round tone, and let's see how far we can get with that. Okay. Before we start overdriving. Okay. So um, I'll start with the uh, the JTM 45. Dan, what we're after is a nice, clean, round tone. I'll play a Strat in a sec, but if you just um, give us some playing and we'll see if we can get a clean, round tone. Okay. That's really beautiful. That's really beautiful. Starting to hit overdrive a bit yeah, there, yeah. just on the edges. Just on the edge when you dig in. But that feels like it's in such a lovely place. Yeah, so I'll show you where the controls are. Um, if you keep going down. start to see the the issue well yeah. that is loud enough for most modern gigs mm -hmm. certainly wouldn't have been loud enough back in the day no and it's already overdriving so if i hit that with a some humbuckers just for a second this should kick it quite nicely into into overdrive <laughs> Thank you. 
still cleans up. Yeah. Yeah. But nowhere near enough headroom for, sure. for any sort of loud playing. No, no, no. So we're heavily into overdrive. Let's see where that point is on the 87X. See okay. how much clean we can get out of the 87X. <laughs> And likewise, I think Lester's going to over right. overdrive that. The mids are in a very different place as well. Up by a long chalk, by, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. And I deliberately hit that high string there because that's where you get that crunch, that mm. edge. And to me, that's what defines that 50 watt lead sound. Right. Super, super, super sizzle. The, yeah. the JTM 45 will do it, but not in the same way. Yeah. What's interesting about that is that you might even argue there's more clean available from the 87X because mm. it's more powerful. Sure. So there's a little bit more headroom, but the sizzle and everything on top. Okay. But you're going to get much rounder clean sounds, from I think, the, from the out 45. of the JTM 45. Yeah. And certainly the feel of that, um, the way it puts it through the power section, the fact it's only 30 watts, not 50. Did you be feeling that? Absolutely. But also the sag from the valve rectifier, yeah. when it gets to that point, that the big difference when we talk about uh, that sag is what I'm, I'm really feeling that as the everything's struggling to take that current to, you know, give it the the transients. Yeah. Whereas the 87X is bang on. It's so quick. Well, yeah. it's so much quicker. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Incidentally, we're not going to be hearing the effects loop in the 87X today because uh, of the way that we're switching the two amps. Details of that are in the um, description if you want to read it. Okay, so roughly kind of clean territory. Mm. I just want to try something with a strap for a second. Okay. Into the JCM45, bear in mind, we'll just stay where exactly where we were for those settings just a second ago and just give you a quick les listen to how the sort of clean roundness that you can achieve with that. There's that, but there's this as well. 412. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas the 87X is, it's all down the middle. Okay. 
You can affect that somewhat with the presence control. Right. Because the presence controls uh, the amount of negative feedback in the circuit. So when the presence control is on zero, you've got maximum negative feedback. Sure. And when it's all the way around the to the right uh, minimum, and that affects the EQ in quite a significant way. Sure. Just play for a sec, Dan. Massive difference. Yeah. Really massive difference. So that can be a thing. But of course, because there's not a lot of gain going on in the amp itself, you can add some reverb and delay into the front of the amp and get a really beautiful clean sound, J40, JCM45, especially. <laughs> So down there, when it's not overdriving too much, fine, reverb mm. delay in the front. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful clean sounds. Yeah. Um, but that's not what you're here for, is Indeed. it? No, well, no. <laughs> I am, however, having very funny feelings about the uh, the 45. I think it would Deep pair, into my soul. It would pair so brilliantly with the Matchless because it's got that... Just go on. Let's, let's indulge Dan in some clean, in some clean niceness just for a second. Okay.
stunning, stunning clean sound. You saw from the inset there where we are, high trebles up around four on the JCM45. Normal is at four, just for the halibut. If we do that on the... Uh... <laughs> Watch your ears. So here's both amps with both of their volumes on four. Give me a second. <laughs> I'm just protecting my left ear a little bit at the moment for various reasons. Uh, go on then, JCM45, both volumes on four. That is that sound. I mean, I don't know about you, but that's just too histrionic. Oh, it's, in it's, the top it's end for me. yeah. It, I can, I can understand, in the right context, it would be incredible. But it's a very, even oh, I don't know, even in a really dense mix, I'd still want to control that a yeah. little bit more than that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Maybe it's just, it might actually... You might be screaming at the screen, what about the Bright Cap mod, which is a famous mod for Plexis, where you make the Bright Cap much smaller. But to be honest, once it's up and overdriving four to six, it's not really doing a huge amount. It's still doing a bit, but yeah, it's yeah. not doing a huge amount. Yeah. Um, can make a much smoother sounding. Okay, uh, let's do the JCM45 thing. As mentioned in the VT, Blues Breakers, Eric Clapton was a huge, well, it was the pivotal moment in the JTM 45's history, albeit in two by 12 combo form with an open back cab. So it's not quite the same thing, mm. but let's just up the gain a bit. We'll get into what, I'll, I'll, I'll what go I would think of as sort of 60s British blues territory with the Leicester. Okay, I'll go and twiddle the knobs. Yeah, yeah, cool. If you could uh, take some VT while you're there. Indeed. Actually, you may as well. If you do it on mine, then I'll have it. I'll have access to it all. If you could just make sure it's on 4K, darling. Yes. Okay, so we'll start off in the JTM45. Bear in mind where where Dan just left off. This is where we left off on the telly, right? <laughs> Thank you. 
So we, where did we end up on the volumes? All the way. All the way, okay, cool. So that was it, cranked. All right, didn't sound like Clapton, I know that. Um, but that's the sound of that amp cranked. Did he use a boost? Did he use a treble boost? I don't think so. Put it on six. Put it on eight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to me, once you boost that, it sounds more like a much more like a modern high gain sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the other thing in that sound, of course, was the room reverb. This is interesting. If we try and put reverb into the front of the JT45, JCM45 cranked, it will probably just sound awful. Let's uh, see if we can find a room reverb on here. As long as you don't overdo it, it's fantastic. No sadness. I thought that was going to turn into horrific. No, that was amazing. Horrific, awful, awfulness. Okay, can we try the same thing though as yeah. the 87? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that will be uh, the litmus test. So we're, we're, we might be pushing the gain a bit too much for that kind of 60s British blues thing, but that's... That was awesome. That's where we are, okay? Okay. <laughs> this feeling sure I would prefer the JTM 45 by a million miles. Right. There is something about that plexi. It's so rock. When it's cooking with a Marshall. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we left British blues territory then and we were into, we were into rock, weren't we? That was a, that was so much closer to the rock Marshall thing that I'm used to hearing. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Too cool. Uh, Let's move on. Um, just, just do a bit of quick, a quick bit of strap. Okay. And um, fuzz, because I think it's relevant, isn't it? Indeed. I must say, as far as 
visuals are concerned, that's about as erotic as an ant gets. It does make one feel good, doesn't it? Does it does make one feel very, very good. Okay, we won't do too much of this, uh, <coughs> but I've got a strat tuned to E flat here, which is somewhere close to some Jimmy territory. Uh, we've got a fuzzy thing and we've got some marshals. What could be better? I am going to turn the room reverb on part of the way through, but we'll start without it. Touching my bottom, I'm just looking for my earplug. Interesting. So, what I'm getting from the plexi, though, well, they're both plexis, right? But what I'm getting from the 87 is that extra mid range yeah. that you would associate with something like a clone after it. And it's tightening of the bottom end. Yeah. So, it's just that the energy is lifted up from those low frequencies into the mids. Very much so. So interesting. But there's a, the 45 is fat as you like. Yeah. Fascinating. Okay. Very nice. Okay. Right. Next. I, I want to try. Some DS1, like classic distortion Get on. into the amp set like this, right? And this is the guitar to do it with. <laughs> <laughs>
see that change in and, and, and what it really is only small changes right it's not completely a different amplifier a small little yeah one bits. one eventually morphs into the other and then of course they keep on morphing into uh, the JMP master volumes into the JCM 800s into the 900s into the DSLs you know it's right. it's a lineage of of martial development but, but that that mid range thing is the mid range and the attack it's so quintessentially martial isn't yeah. it there's, yeah there's and it's magic i don't know i came into this thinking we'd walk away from it going oh give me the JTM 45 every day of the week because it's it's closer to what me and you love yeah but actually, that, that 50 watt plexi, once it's breathing, is a really special thing. But it has to be breathing. Yeah. So, because the, the 45 at a reasonable volume. Way I, more usable. I can, all of this into it just sounds magic. Yeah. Certainly the way that I would use it, like that paired with the matchless. Yeah, yeah. I think it's going to be very, very special. It's going to work. Um, but. That the sound of that of that thing of the the eighty seven, the that mid range and that harshness that that we perceive when it's at a with headroom. As soon as that gets turned up, it's like oh, that's why that's there because yeah. it's like you know it's just it's so in your face. But those are the frequencies that are going to make it sit yeah. in a mix, um, and when the amp is limiting like that. It's just magic to play. That's so cool. What do you reckon? 
I'm glad we've got it. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm really glad we've got it. I think we'll use it a lot. I'm just trying to think before we sign off if there's any if there's something we haven't done that we kind of should done. But we've done we've done like raunchy telly, we've done a bit of strat, we've done Leicester. I think I mean we could keep going all day, couldn't we? But Yeah. Uh, all the, I mean, all the questions that I had have been answered. Yeah. And and the outcome is very different than I thought it would be. Exactly like you. I thought I'd be like, oh boy, the 87 is going to be rubbish compared to that, to the 45, but actually no. Yeah. And they're f for different things. Yeah. I think it's pedal platform for me, really hard to look past at 45. It's a beautiful sounding thing. Yeah. Especially for the volumes we play at now. Yeah, yeah. Because you can have that, I mean, it's hella loud, but you can have it nice and clean and headroomy, mm. which would sit fine in most of the sort of gigging situations that we find ourselves in these yeah. days. Yeah. Uh, maybe not as a main amp, because it would start to break up a bit too much for me on the clean side. It's surprising side. how quickly it breaks up. Yeah, but as certainly as the secondary amp, and of course, if you're that kind of player that wants the amp to just go in and you've got humbuckers and you love it sat in that place, it's pretty perfect for that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think this spawns a bunch of other videos, not not least the next one ought to really be the um, Baseman and the JTM45, didn't it? Absolutely. I know loads of people have done it. You can watch this online, but to hear it with our own ears in here, done the TPS way, I think it's worth doing. Absolutely. And and big uh, kudos to the, um, the headbone. Yeah. From Radial. So that's the device that's switching between the, the two heads. So uh, yeah. Yeah, because really we cool. obviously we wanted to keep the speaker cabinet exactly the same and the mics and everything exactly the same. So you were just hearing the difference in the amps. Yeah. Groovy. Amazing. Nice. That was so much fun. Uh, oh, so again, thank you so much for watching. Um, a massive thank you to anyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and bought some merchandise. That's what keeps us going. Uh, and also uh, for our American friends, yeah, that pedalshop.com. Please go there, buy pedals, amps, accessories, all that kind of stuff. Um, we'd appreciate that. Also, patreon.com slash that pedal show. Uh, if you want to support us that way, you get weekly podcast and we do monthly giveaways. Yes, a massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is... Anderton's Music of Guildford in Surrey. And our mates in Australia. Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. Indeed. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you soon. We will. Bye.